Chain Chomp Brayden owns the title for clearing the hardest level in Mario Maker. His level, Trials of Death. It's over 8 minutes of very precise and particular movements. Yoshi is used occasionally, but it's mostly just little Mario, meaning any damage kills you. But this person, who I'm going to call Curvy Lines, actually found a way to bring Yoshi to the very end, either bypassing or entirely changing most of the intended sections of the entire level. I won't go over all of the cheese, but I will show how it starts and some of the particularly creative things that were cheesed with Yoshi. The full cheesed video is linked in the description. The cheesed version starts off the same with the shell jump, P-switch jump, and spring jump, followed by some precise bomb spins, bomb grab, throw it up to release a Yoshi that's just up off screen, and then hop on Yoshi. At this point, we're 10 seconds into the 8 minute level and the cheese has already started. You see this P-switch? It's not supposed to go here. The intended strat is to throw the P-switch precisely enough to hit this note block that spits out a spring, then grab the spring and run and jump to the right, narrowly avoiding danger. But the start of the cheese is to throw the P-switch here instead, but intentionally jump into this skewer, causing Yoshi to run and give you some time for invincibility. Without the P-switch being here, Yoshi would run off into the lava, but this allows him to come back to you. Then we use this chain chomp to get up to this spike. Do a few precise jumps to get all the way to this door. A little further in takes advantage of some de-cheesing that Brayden put in and actually helps with the cheese. You see, normally, when you don't want a player to cheat a section, you would put in a hidden block so that if they go somewhere they aren't supposed to, you can prevent them from progressing, and sometimes it's helpful to use boo rings or munchers just to be extra certain that the player can't make it through and will be able to die. But in this part, Yoshi allows you to stand on the thwomp as it floats back up. These D-Cheese hidden blocks actually help curvy lines to have a platform to get up to here and advance further. One particularly creative part of the cheesing was where Curvy Lines needed to get Yoshi into this pipe with a beetle shell in his mouth. But as you can see, there's nothing on this lava to stand on and there's a back and forth winged boo. So if you want to play at home, look at this section and if you had a beetle, sideways spring, regular spring, and a pow, how would you get from here all the way around to here? You should pause now if you want to think about it. If you figured it out, you're smarter than most because the solution is to put the sideways spring here, then a pow here, the regular spring here, and a beetle shell here. Once in place, you grab the sideways spring so the top two drop on the conveyor, immediately spit the spring to launch the shell and grab the shell before it hits you, fall onto the pow, hop over the boo, and use the spring to get you just high enough to get onto the spike. From here, it's a simple damage boost to remount and allow you to fit through here and go down the pipe. One thing you might be wondering about is what these 10 pink coins are used for. Brayden added them to force the player to do all of the various parts of the level as he intended so that at the final donut drop section you would have gotten all 10 coins and get yourself a key. So where did Curvy Lines get the key when getting here with Yoshi? Well, remember the beginning of the level when the cheese started and I said the original intent was to jump to the right? This chain chomp here bounces along and eventually hits a note block with a key in it so that you can go up and get into this key door. But in the cheese version, Curvy Lines stands here and the chain chomp hits the block, giving you a key. So it's safe to say that if this here was a regular door and didn't require a key, most of this cheese would be useless. And now the finale. Near the end, there's a part where Mario and Yoshi need to get from here up to here, and there's nothing to boost them up. But Brayden added de-cheesing hidden blocks here with munchers because with just Mario, it would immediately mean death. But with Yoshi being able to stand on munchers, they actually give the needed height to get up to this block. And then in this little gap here, it's actually the spikes that allow you to bring Yoshi through. If even just these few spikes were any other block, you wouldn't be able to bring Yoshi through. And the final cheese is really beautiful because you may have noticed Yoshi had something in his mouth in the last section. A little earlier, Curvy Lines grabbed a sideways spring because once you make it down here with Yoshi, you aren't done yet. Just like up here without spikes, down here would be impossible to get through. But these big boo rings and this little gap end up being the two things needed to finish it off. Yoshi takes damage and runs, 
Mario jumps just perfectly enough so that he mounts Yoshi slightly under this block, enough to be able to hop down into the gap. And you can't just hop left on Yoshi to make it through here, even if you use the invincibility frames. There just isn't enough time to hop. But with the spring in his mouth, he spits it to the right, and this is what's needed to get the necessary speed. So he takes the damage, mounts Yoshi, jumps into the spring and give him just enough speed to turn left and hop to the axe right before losing the invincibility frames. Job well cheesed.